in the context of forest farming, we uh, want to talk about forest health. And most of the times we're growing things underneath the forest canopy or within a forest somehow to, uh, to harvest and to use in some way. But another aspect of forest farming and forest health is actually weeding out the problematic species, such as invasive plants. Most properties in, uh, in the eastern United States for sure, that's what I'm most familiar with, have invasive plants on them. Uh, here behind me we have Alanthus, a tree of heaven. It's a real problem in this area and uh, it's something that can be weeded out. It's a little more difficult than weeding out your garden because uh, you need to cut the tree down and put chemical on the stump or you can apply chemical directly to the tree and let it die in place. We're choosing here to uh, remove them from the site and make use of the wood which can be used as firewood or in our case we're going to be turning them into charcoal. And the benefit of this to the forest is for forest health. Invasive species are for the most part non-native and they um, occupy niches that native species would um, provide better benefits for, for wildlife, for uh, timber, for um, aesthetics, for uh, recreation, just about anything. An invasive species is less valuable uh, than a native species. So, um, <clears throat> and in the case of uh, Lanthus, Tree of Heaven, this is a tree that uh, tends to form kind of monocultures. Once it gets a hold in a site, the seed and sprouts will, will uh, occupy that site and not let much else grow there, which is detrimental to the wildlife and, and the whole ecosystem. Um, <clears throat> some people think of, of pines as being a monoculture, and they are, but there's uh, oftentimes in the understory of pine trees a, a rich, uh, rich understory of native species. So uh, as long as a, a species is native, that's better than, than a non-native. For someone who maybe isn't uh, real comfortable with identification of the tree, the, uh, the stem is very stout. It uh, ends somewhat bluntly. It's often confused with um, walnut and sumac. Um, walnut um, has a, a serrated leaf edge. These are actually leaflets, but the uh, edge on the leaflets of walnut um, are serrated. Um, th so this whole thing is a leaf with many leaflets. It's called a compound leaf. Both sumac and walnut have compound leaves. The sumac is different also in its, uh, in its leaf edge, its margin. And one of the other characteristics is that it stinks. This pith, if you smell it, some people say it smells like burnt peanut butter. I've never burned peanut butter, so I'm not sure what that smell is like. <laughs> but it has a big uh, kind of brown pith in it. And uh, walnut has a chambered pith, very different looking and uh, sumac does not have um, that smell. People are surprised that this wood can actually make decent charcoal and decent firewood, but it's dense enough that it uh, is, is all right, but you do have to keep it dry. It'll rot fast if it's wet. 